success. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Realtor Vinny. Hi, Real Truth listeners. Today I have Alex. Uh, he's the founder of Simply Social. Also immigrated to the U.S. at 19, managed some boy bands, figured out there was a kind of a gap and Simply Social and another platform uh, that uses artificial intelligence. And if you're listening to this now, you're probably the whole jet, chat GPT and all that kind of stuff. So uh, thank you, Alex, for being here today. Yes, of course. Hey, great to meet you. Thank you for having me. So walk walk us through a little bit. I mean, what uh, I know you have a couple different brands that you're kind of working through. How do you best describe basically your footprint in the business or your your day to day? I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have I have two businesses that I'm running. Uh, so what is called Simple Social and Simple Social is focusing on consumption building and uh, data science around uh, artists and musicians. So what I do, I come from the data science background and my goal is to analyze the data, spend the money on digital advertising and build records, build songs. And another thing that we did, it kind of like evolved from one to another is uh, SoundMe. And SoundMe is a platform that based, AI based platform that based TikTok creators and, and influencers based on their performances versus of uh, their ones to make, to make it simple. So, yeah, so this is this is the two companies we're running right now. Well, I mean, let's rewind to to young Alex. I mean, um, where did you where did you immigrate from? I came from a friendly country. I came from Russia. At the okay. moment, it's not a very friendly country. But back then it was friendly. But back then it was fine. Um, yeah. And I moved here. I didn't know where I'm going to live. So I just found a guy back then. It was msn i think that was the the name of the platform a messenger before yeah. we had like those like you know text messages i messages you know whatsapp and uh, telegram there was a msn uh and i found i found the guy who i'm gonna live with never never meeting him just found him somehow and i was like he's like oh, i'm going to the same school you want to live together and i'm like okay sure i didn't speak any english i I'd never been to the united states and i was 19 so i came and i was like and I was living with my parents. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I'm going to do it. I stayed at the hotels before. And then from one day to another, I'm staying like in the room that, you know, has nothing in it. It's a room, nothing in it, not what I expected. I, I don't understand what people are telling me. I'm scared of everything. I was like, I don't know where to go. I don't know where the market is. I don't know, where, you know, I don't have a car, nothing. You know, I didn't even have a driver license. Now what am I going to do? So, yeah, so I had to figure it out all. What, what prompted you to go to college uh, in the U.S.? Well, I got my, I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to play guitar. That was my dream. Um, and I was, um, I studied, I got a BA in classical music and jazz back in, back in Russia. And then I wanted to further my career. So I was accepted to, to go and study music farther. So I got the, I got masters in, in, uh, composition and in music and, you know, just continue my education pretty much. And you, so you come, you come to the U.S. How long did it take for you to actually feel like acclimated? I mean, was the music the same that you were were doing out there, the classical to the music that was uh, practiced in in college here? I mean, what were the differences and what were the similarities? Everything was different. You know, it was like completely one eighty turn, right? So even the music that we listened to, that because. Overseas, like in, in, in Russia, right? And, and that's how the record industry works. And that's how it works in different countries, in different territories. Like if you go to, let's say, if you move to Russia, France, you know, Germany, they're going to have local music, right? Local record labels. And they're going to have a music that record labels they feel like they can promote and they want to promote on their market. So a lot of artists that were huge here, I didn't know they even existed. Like artists like Coldplay, I never heard of them. I was like, what is this? It's kind of cool. You know, like and a bunch of others, you know, like Steven Wonder only played one song. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's the only song I knew. It was like, I just want to go to say I love you, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only song we knew. We didn't know any other ones. So, and, and that's that's pretty much how it ended. So like you come here and it's just, okay, I was just in completely different, you know, it completely switched. You know, people still, Nickelback still packs the, the arenas there. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's the, that's the difference. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
if you come here, it's a completely different thing, right? Completely different music, completely different teachers. And the uh, education is much better. Over there was kind of, here's music, figure it out. Over here it was like, oh, why don't you understand? Let me help you. Let me actually make a difference. So education is much better. So I'll be honest with you. Well, the process of taking in information, I think, is different, too. I listened to someone talk about uh, an actor, an uh, American actor that went to uh, college in Russia and mm -hmm. took acting. And he says that the process that they learned out there was different than what he heard in, in the U.S. here. So I wonder, is the way, I guess, listening to music, was it more of what are you feeling compared to this is what it is? Or yeah it, it's it's it was the whole the whole process was completely different it was completely opposite a lot of things i had to completely relearn because they were wrong and i had to i had to also retrain my ear right when when i come russian people love ballads they love slow songs they love slow slow, slow songs that they can like you know cry to and be sad to and things like that that's the music right like very slow music they love it here it's 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 people like ballads but not as much you know so i had to like learn learn all the stuff it's like oh this is kind of cool why is it cool okay this is this is interesting why is it interesting so i had to you know i had to teach myself how to do it but luckily i wasn't there like that long you know 19 years it's not not that much you know i think it's much harder when you're older to adapt to your country which is much oh, more complicated sure. well so you're you come here to the u.s to to kind of go, build your passion of music when did the realization that maybe you putting out music wasn't going to be the pathway it was more of you helping other people put their music out um i was touring uh and i was i was going on multiple tours we, we used to like you know i got in the bands uh and we started to tour and i toured sometimes like six months out of the year and then you come back for a month and you go another six months another five months so i've been home like for a month or like one at a time two months at a time and i remember me and my wife we we got you know when the economy was down we got our first house you know we saved up for a long time and i was like all right let's let's get a house so we got the first house i got a chihuahua and um we you know i left on tour so we we closed on the house i you know it was like a massive massive fixer upper like like the worst you can not the worst but you you know you can imagine it was yeah. really like falling apart but it was it was you know 2011 or 12 or something like that so it was back then and i put some grass i seeded some grass you know we got a chihuahua i painted the walls and i go and went on tour and i was gone for three months so i come back after no four months i think and i come back after four months the grass is tall the chihuahua is big the wife is there and i'm like i don't want to live like that this is not my life i don't want to live i don't want to live like that because this is this is what is going to end up i'm going to end up traveling you know so much time and i'm going to end up coming back for a month and i'm going to miss all my life i'm going to miss what what matters to me so i quit the next day i was like you know what i'm out wow. I, I can't do it anymore um yeah and then i started playing locally started touring like starting you know doing doing local shows and local gigs uh yeah so that's that's how that's what the realization came in <laughs> no so more so you so you're is it kind of a, a pathway of doing tours to doing local kind of going a little smaller and then to managing or what is that what does that process kind of go from oh managing was completely different there was no there was no process okay. it was like some dude that some dude i knew right like and and i was i was hanging out in la i was i was chilling in la and the, the, the dude who i knew he came and said like hey man like i have you know like a friend of mine is making a project right he put he, they put a project together and i'm like all right that's cool it's like oh yeah it's gonna be a boy band i'm like okay I'm like well they we you know we have funding for them we have five boys from all over the world we need to kind of figure out the rest but the guy really wants to do it uh and like and, and like he's like yeah and the guy guy doesn't you know he doesn't live here he doesn't come here a lot he's like you know he just he just wants to fund it he just wants the boy band to be built right to be made and and he believes that the boy band is the next big thing right because one direction was pumping and you know it's like and like oh they're looking for a manager they're looking for somebody who's going to handle the boys and i'm like okay sure let's do it why not so and that was kind of like a step step of faith in the way that's like you know i'm, I'm just gonna go and freaking do that you know because why not i've never done it before um so i stepped out and from my gigs and everything and i'm like all right let's see so i met the boys right the boy band and some kids were and they were kids they were like 15 16 17 18 so it's like five of them 
from different parts of the world. Like some kids were from Germany, some kids like, you know, three from Ger two from Germany, three from the US and their moms and their parents. And now I'm dealing with this. And now, now I'm managing a boy band and they all looking at me and saying like, Hey, you have to build a career. You know, have to help, help us out somehow figure it out. And I don't know anybody in the industry, right? The only things I know is local bands and local musicians, local bar owners, you know, so like, I'm like, all right, let's, let's start digging. So within the year we got them and I got really passionate about it. I'm like, all right, we're just going to make it work somehow, you know, cause those kids, I, I like the kids and it's like, you know, they depend on me. I have to build something. I have to do something. So within the year, I got them 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And it was back like 2015. YouTube started to become big. And so we grew their subscribers. I got them nominated for Teen Choice Awards. I got them touring and uh, playing shows with Fifth Harmony, BB Rex, and Troy Savan. So they did all these big shows, like huge, huge festivals. Like we did the biggest show I think we did was 15 to 20,000 people. So we're pretty big, you know, steam started to come up. People started to recognize them and it started to bubble. Like you felt it, you know, like we go to the show, we go to the signing somewhere and the girls line up, the kids line up. And I was like, okay. So I'm like, this, this something, something's going to happen here. Um, and then they decided like, right when we played 20,000 show, like right when it started to get big and I'm like, all right, this is it. This has got it. This has got to be huge. Uh, One Direction broke up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the opportunity to to step in and uh, you know make it through. And then they all decided that they want to be solo artists all of a sudden. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can make more and I can become more famous if I'm solo. So they broke up pretty much within within two weeks. They just fell apart. And I was like, huh? Did did any of them make it big on their own? No. Can you <laughs> No, it doesn't work like that. You can't just step out. You have to be like smart and strategic. It doesn't work like that. Um, so yeah, so boy band fell apart. Uh, and I was like, now what? You know, and like, I don't want to go back to music. I don't want to do gigs and stuff. You know, I travel around the United States. We like, we did shows, we did tours. It's like, you know, I see how it is. And like, all right, I did all the socials for them. I built them from scratch. And And the reason why I did this is because I couldn't find anybody who could. Like there's still there's still a loophole of people who don't know how to build social media. It's all about it. Like a lot of people are faking it. A lot of people are doing wrong things and it's just not working out. So I'm like, if if I needed it and I couldn't find anybody, maybe somebody else would need the services. Mm -hmm. So and I started talking to people who I already met and I was like, hey, I, I'm trying to do social media company. And they're like, oh, another social media company? There's so many of them, stuff like that. I'm like, all right. Well, I want to try it out. And it turned out to be that that's everybody needs it, right? And like it's it was a big, big hole that wasn't filled. Everybody were kind of, what am I? You know, I don't know how to grow my Instagram. I don't know how to build my fans, things like that. So I started doing that. And within the first, within the first six months, I got to like 170 clients, just within like within a few months because I was doing a good job because I knew what I'm doing. I was like all right, I do this, 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 this. I'm like, I'm surprised, you know, that it's not going. And then, yeah, and then from there, I started to meet more and more artists, more and more managers. And then I have not, I kind of, I got blessed, right? I never had to run an ad for myself once. I never had to advertise myself once. All my, my whole businesses are built because of word of mouth. Wow. Because I do a good job. And people talk and people tell each other, like, oh, yeah, let me introduce you to Alex. Oh, yeah, like he's doing such a good job. Let me introduce you to him. And then when Matt, you know, I started to meet uh, people, started to meet connections. I, I became really good friends with Randy Jackson, who was an American Idol guy, hmm. you know. Uh, so we became friends. And he said, like, hey, I have like on Epic Records. It was back in the day, right? On Epic Records, I have this boy band who you should try with, you know, like maybe we can draw something. And that was my aim with the labels, right? Mm -hmm. And then another another artist talked, and then another manager talked, and then another label talked, and then it just became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just built like a snow cone, or a snow, you know? So it just continued to grow. That's that's pretty much my story. Well, so what's what's been the, because as a band, you're just a, a entity of the band, right? You're just a person in the band, right? As a manager, you probably have more control, but you also, with only one band managing one band, you could probably do a lot more, of having control over it as you're getting mm -hmm. bigger you're bringing on probably other people to help support basically your plan what's been that kind of road like for you the hiring process bringing in the right people what's that look like 
Um, so for simple, for simple social, we're a very small team. We're handling, I'm handling, I would say like on, on, on the month, on the busy month, probably around 2000 releases in a month on the slow month, about thousand, you know, roughly. Right. So it's just going to go, go back and forth. And it's, it's a lot of releases. Uh, but I figured out the path of how to automate a lot of things in a way, not automate it on the ad side, because ads I still do by hand and I do everything. I do everything by hand. I do everything tailored done by me, but everything prior to the ad starting, you know, like when the campaigns roll out, you know, emails, notifications and things like that, everything prior to this is, is all automated. My team is very small. I only have three people, oh, two, wow. two, two besides me. So it's me and two more people. So that's a very small team and very tight team. And we know, you know, they know exactly what I know, you know, and they all do in different roles. Right. So, and, and it's very close niche because I know, I know so much about it and I don't want any information to leak. Right. Cause I'm, I'm still, after so many years of doing it, I'm still one off people like, you know, who knows exactly what, how to do this and how to do it, how to build it, how to do it the right way. A lot of people still missing the point. Um, and I don't want this to leak. I don't want anybody to know. You know, I just I'm just gonna keep it in the house, and I'm not gonna tell anybody what I'm doing exactly, how I'm doing it. So, it's my wife who's doing all the you know accounting with the, with the company, with both companies actually, and it's my brother-in-law who's helping me with okay. creatives, with assets, and so it's a family run at this point. Um, and I don't have any assistants. I don't have any. You know, I I handle like hundreds of emails, but it's all it's all to the point when I'm like so organized and automated with this that I can like, I use a lot of shortcuts. I use a lot of automations. I use a lot of like, you know, one button does this, one button does this sorting, organizing everything, lists and sheets. And it's been working so far. Uh, yeah. You So you said that a lot of people are doing it wrong. I mean, you don't have to talk about what your secret sauce is. And I mean, is there something that when you look at how other people put their product out there that you go, wow, they're just doing it the wrong way. I think to to simplify it, right? I don't think people are reading their data, right? And I don't think people understand their data. They're looking at the wrong thing because they're looking at. Uh, I'm going to be talking from the artist standpoint, right? And uh, you're looking at the big artist right away, right out of the gate. You're looking at somebody like Harry Styles. You're looking at somebody like you know Olivia Rodrigo, and you're saying like, "Oh, I want to do this. I want to do what they're doing." So you're trying to hit that, but instead of realizing that there's so much was happening like underneath that you know before that prior to this you see that the end result right you see the success and you think like oh they made it overnight like it must be a record label do it no it's it's been a lot of work prior to this and a lot of people a lot of artists trying to skip this work and saying like i want to be famous now but there's a lot of things being done before that same thing with the product with, with the brands it's a little different right i don't work brands i stay away from brands and i stay away from products and the reason at some point, I probably will, but the reason is I'm just not passionate about it. There's just no passion for me to promote, I don't know, like the deodorant or something like that. It's just not exciting. I want to be excited about what I do. Uh, and but but the brands I dealt with, 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 with you know, with a fair share of brands in my life, and what what I think is an issue there, you get attached to your product. You 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 love your product. You say like, oh, this deodorant is the best deodorant. You believe in this, right? And you think this is the best, the best amazing thing. But other people, just because your friends like it, it doesn't mean other people gonna like it. Just because you know you found a few people, like a couple of people who you know who said like, oh, that's actually really good. It smells really good. It doesn't mean the rest of the people will. So, and I think the realization of adapting and changing and being, oh, my my product people not buying it. I need to move on. I need to adapt. People keep pushing the same thing and it's okay to push the same thing but it's okay also to add things on top of it so you go i have a deodorant okay deodorant is not selling well let me try toothpaste let me try uh i don't know hand face wash let me try you know floss and things like that so you're adding to your product line although your first product is not a hit yet the second might be and the second hit is going to drag everything around it so that's that's what i think a big kind of thing is if it answers <laughs> No, 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 for sure. I mean, in, in kind of building your brand from where you are today, I mean, looking back at your your past, what's been kind of like the, the biggest hurdle, hiccup that you've had to kind of work through into getting to this point? I think 
I, I had a lot of fear and I still have a lot of fear, you know, like, and to me it was a big realization. It might sound stupid, right? But to me it was a big realization that everybody has the same fear. Everybody has the fear of failing and everybody has the fear of like, I'm consistently thinking about it's like, all right, what's next? You know, what are we doing next? How are we going to move on? And it's always been a hurdle. Uh, come over, overcome the fear of failing that that was really, really hard. And it's still, still to, to today, it's still here, you know, and it's not, it's not going to diminish. It's getting smaller, but there's still voice in my, in my head. What if, you know, what if this is going to happen? What if this is going to happen? And it was a big, uh, you know, it, it, it was really hard to overcome. It was hard to make it, make it through that. Um, and I'm still working on it consistently. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, go ahead. Well, so what pushes you, I mean, to, to get through the fear and not listen to the fear and do those activities or take those, those chances. I, you know, I, I kind of look at this. If, if I'm going to stop now and if I'm going to give up and if I'm going to say, you know what, just let it go, let it be, then, then I would never know what the end result is. Right. I would never know if, if, if I'm going to win or not. I, I want to win. At the end of the day, I want to win. And I want to see how far I can push this, how far I can get with this and how much how much can I achieve with this. But it's always it's always, you know, good and evil, right? It's always, you know, one side says, Go, 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 go. Another side says, No, don't do that. Like, why are you doing this? Like, what's going on? Like, don't. What if? What if it's gonna like break? What if it's gonna fail? You know, and I'm scared, but I'm doing it while I'm scared. So I was like, all right, we're still we're still gonna push it. And I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I watch so many successful people saying like oh like i'm living the life it's so easy it's not freaking easy it's not easy for them either uh-huh. you know whoever whatever whatever guy gonna come on, on youtube or on on tv and say like oh that's so easy just do that just do this it's not easy he makes it seem easy and he makes it seem easy because he already did that but but when you just started out it's hard and it's always hard it's hard for him too you know, whoever you're looking at, it's hard for him too. He's going through the same exact trouble. He's scared as well. We all are. You know, it's the whole world of this. You know, I think even Elon Musk is scared too at some point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, everyone has something they're probably scared of. Yeah, and fear of like fear of whatever, whatever he has, and it's just. But he's still pushing through, and I think pushing through is the most important thing. <clears throat> when you're dealing with an artist and you're helping them grow, I mean, you talked about the idea of fear and, and you also talked about basically influencers, I guess, or business owners, whatever, that portray themselves as as winners and not being afraid. What's what's a better model? And, I, and it's hard to say every artist should be like this. And is it better to be, I guess, more authentic or is it better to be, I guess, more confident? You want to follow someone that's confident, I guess. You want to follow somebody who's authentic. You want to connect with somebody who's authentic. You want to hear music of somebody who, who's authentic. You want to trust them. You want to, when, when I'm listening to the artist, and if I go on their social media, they all have personality, right? And the personality needs to connect. Mm-hmm. And fake personality is going to come through, and you're going to see that. Uh, the real personalities are going to be, you know, people people going to gravitate towards that. That's why I don't do posting. I never did. A lot of people ask me, can you create content for me? Can you post the content for me? And, you know, and I would never do that because if I'm going to start creating content for someone, it's going to be me talking, not them. Mm. And also, if you have no time to create content, then you are not ready for a career. Then you just have to walk away. You know, if you're not ready to do the work, then you're not ready for this. You, you, you don't want a career. I hear a lot of artists say like, oh, I want this so badly. This is my dream. This is my thing. It's like, all right. You're ready to post, you're ready to engage, you're ready to release music, you're ready to do this thing. Oh, that's so much. I didn't realize that. Oh, then you're not ready for a career. Have a nice day. You know, just 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 park yourself somewhere and you, you know, when you're ready, go for it. What what's the what's the goal or what should be the goal for an artist of how much content they should be putting out there? A lot, as much as possible. They have to release music, a lot of music all the time. That's that's the most important thing. And promote your music. So what what I do is you know, if we're looking for the artist who's in psycho, right, and who's releasing, it's gonna be, you know, song, 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 every every four to six weeks. Wow. Yeah. And it looks again, it looks like a lot, right? Oh my gosh, every four to six, four to six weeks, like you know, I have to put out the song. 
within two years, it's 16 songs. It's not that much if you think mm. about it, if you're passionate about what you do. And, you know, a lot of a lot of artists expect that, oh, now I hired Alex. So Alex is going to grow my social, promote my songs, grow my YouTube. I don't have to do nothing anymore. Alex works with biggest record labels and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I do. But you have to do all the work. I'm not going to work harder than you. That's just not going to happen because I, I can't. It's just impossible. You have to put a lot of work for me to do the rest of it, you know? If, I mean, I know you have the the plat, your platform with artificial intelligence. How do you see, because I mean, probably people listening have heard some of these songs that have artificial intelligence has manipulated for like Biggie Smalls singing like someone else's music or Tupac. I mean, where do you see artificial intelligence taking the music industry in the future? Well, let me touch on sound really quick. So if you don't mind, so to explain yeah, what please. we do, because we don't, we don't really do the music, right? On sound, what the sound me does is we, I came up with the idea. What if, uh, what if we create, what if we put, take TikTok creators, right? We were TikTok creators. Now we are also YouTube short creators. So what if we take creators and we set up a bid like we're doing for digital advertising and we'll put AI in between and say, okay, creators, this is the song we're promoting. This is how much you, exactly how much you're gonna make, take it or leave it. And if you're gonna do it, then you're gonna get paid and AI gonna determine how much you're worth per campaign. So you're always gonna see exactly what you're gonna earn, how much you're gonna make. And um, and once you post and once you, you know, once you perform, you're gonna get paid immediately. So what it did, it broke a lot of standard agency uh situations about how you know negotiating with creators doing all this work you know waiting for the creators to post and things like that we're instant and uh we i got blessed with that that the platform i was thinking like hey we're gonna have two thousand people within the next year and i'll be happy with this you know if i can get it to two thousand people in in the next year i'll be great well, it's been a year and a half we crossed a million so i have million influencers from all over the world sitting on my platform and Again, like I was like, how how do I like I have to entertain them? I have to manage them. I have to like you know work with them. So I'm learning as I go as well. But this this platform is just doing doing a lot and been growing rapidly. So it's cool. Um, when it comes to the AI uh, and substituting, I think I don't think it's gonna replace the artists. I don't think it's gonna replace. It was it's it's the same thing that. People thought that, you know, when the internet came out, it's going to replace, you know, whatever it was going to replace. Uh, people always think that. And it's like, oh, it's going to replace. This is the end. It will change in a lot of jobs that, you know, a lot of a lot of jobs, AI is going to take them away. Absolutely. But also it's going to create a lot of jobs, probably more jobs. Um, and when people, I think it will be helpful. I think it's going to help a lot. A lot of artists. I think it's going to help people to make create music quicker, right? So I'll I'll give you an, an example just from what I keep hearing, right? So let's say I let's say I have a record, right? And I'm a singer and I sing sing my song. And in the studio, instead of hiring a bunch of background vocalists, I now can have AI singing and harmonizing with me and doing these things with me, right? Different voices and different things, so I can do. In the studio, I can see it like, okay, there's a main singer, there's a main vocalist, and I can build the sound around him with this background vocal so I can find exactly sound, exact sound that I want instead versus of hiring a bunch of different singers and going through them, right? So that's one thing. Uh, also, mastering records. Uh, that's becoming AI in full because you can just say at this point, you and it's still learning, right? But at this point, you can just pinpoint and say, I want my song sound like that. And it's just going to master it closer to what it is uh what what you're hearing so it's going to get closer to the same thing i think is going to be with mixing you still would need people you would still need uh professional engineers you would still need people who know how to operate and how to run it but it's always but but it's evolving and i, and I like how the technology evolving i love it i'm so excited about it. i'm so excited to see it and see where it's going to take us you know there was a time that you know all the new things are scary you know the new things are uh unknown right and you're thinking like oh what if it's going to do this what if it's going to do that but in the end of the day i think it's it's just going to benefit everybody 
I, I, I guess as long as you adapt, right? I mean, if you adapt to it, you have no choice, right? You have yeah. to adapt to it because otherwise you're going to fall. Uh, otherwise you're going to fall back. And if you fall back, you can't catch up anymore. So. I, I'm guessing, right? I mean, if, if it's, if the, the AI, like you're talking about, allows you to put a, a content out there quicker, that four to mm -hmm. six weeks of releasing a new song <laughs> is probably going to get shorter than I would think over time, right? Where well, you're going to have to do it three to five weeks or? Well, probably. But yeah. I also, it's right now, I, I read statistics. I read statistics a lot. I love statistics. I love data yeah. and statistics. But um, I was looking at statistics of how many songs are coming out on Spotify every single day. It's right. 100,000 a day. 100,000 songs being Damn. uploaded to Spotify every single day. Damn. The number is huge. Yeah. Every single day, every single day. And this is this is all musicians. This is all artists. This is all like people who are trying to make it. And yeah. they all have the same exact goal as, <laughs> as the artist. I want to be famous. I want to be big. So yeah. they're all doing the same thing. Um, the reason why it's three to six, four to six weeks is because um, because if you're trying to get on editorial playlist, if you're trying to pitch yourself, and if you're trying to um, get get heard by Spotify, it's they they need time to listen because they have to listen, and they have AI now listening too, so it helps them a lot probably. Yeah. Um, but also, it it also allows you time to promote the songs. But there are artists, um, NBA Young Boy, you know him, right? You know yeah. of him. Yeah. like biggest youtube hip-hop artist ever right he put out let me remember he put out 102 songs in 2022 oh, God. <laughs> and i remember like i remember like it, it, it like people talked about him right and he was i have more songs to put out i want to put out song every single day i have enough music I want to put out albums. I want to put out music. He's a machine. It's like, you know, Ras, another, another rapper, right? Like he did before he broke, before he became big, right? He did song a week, 52 songs in a year. That's, that's how much it took him. Like, but then being young boy is a freaking record. It's like, it's, it's, you look at him and like, man, like you're doing hundred songs in a year. It's just, dude, this is fantastic. This is crazy. Damn. You know, <laughs> yeah that's 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 the power of you know well well thank you so much alex for being here uh, i just have one of last course. question well before we i get to the question if people are listening what's the best way and i know we have all your socials in the the show notes but what's the mm -hmm. best way of people getting a hold of you or reaching out or finding out what you're doing in the future yeah they could just send me send me an email you can put my email in the description okay uh, or or visit um simple social dot info not dot com dot info or like or advertising that me, which is easier. And for the AI platform, you can go on sound that me to find it. Perfect. And and seriously, guys, in the show notes, all Alice's um, tags are in there. So there's a lot of ways to get in contact with them. All right. So just finish off with this last question, Alex. If we were talking, let's say in five years from now, where do you envision yourself and your company? That's a very good question. I think with sound, uh, I'm envisioning that we are working with brands because this is where I'm going to step in into brands. I envision that we have probably, hopefully close to 10 to 15 million creators on the platform. Um, doing at this point, doing also Instagram, which is really important and whatever other platform is going to come up because in, in five years, there might be another, you know, another, <laughs> another social media that's going to overtake everything. But the cool thing is I have millions of people who want to work and who's willing to work. So, I can we can bring them to any platform and they they still gonna do a great job there. Um, and for the simple social, I feel like it's gonna keep evolving in the way. I started my YouTube channel because I want to share what what you know I'm talking about, like and what my knowledge. It's time I'm that age now that I need to share. <laughs> um, and um, I started doing this, so I hope this is gonna grow. I hope I'm I'm you know I'm growing it, and I just started, so I'm hoping that I'm gonna cross. In the five years, probably meeting, hopefully meeting subscribers at this point, hopefully, God willing. And uh, for the simple social, I'm just going to continue growing and continue building it. I want to work more with indie uh, artists and I want to work more with, I want to work with record, on records that I'm passionate about, you know, and the find artists that I'm passionate about. And they're like, oh yeah, like I was, 
behind this one, behind this one, behind this one, you know, in the very, very beginning. So that's, that's the most exciting part. The best part about being doing what I do and being in the record industry, you hear all the songs first. Yeah. That's the best part for me. You can go and listen. It's like, if you think about it, it's like only a very select group of people heard this music. You know, it's a producer, artist, writers, you know, label, uh, execs or whatever. So it's probably 10 people. And you listen to it and you're like, I'm probably 11th, <laughs> you know, or 15th. And the whole world is going to hear it tomorrow. And it might become one of the biggest hits out there, you know, and nobody knows about it. But I heard it first. So that's that's probably the most exciting one. Okay. I, I know I said the last last question, but I got one. This is a really simple one. <clears throat> Has there been a moment where first that either you heard the song before everyone else heard it and you're like, this is going to basically blow up. This is going to be great. And then a second one where you've heard the song, you're like, this is going to blow up and it actually doesn't blow up. It happens all the time. And I'm always wrong. You're always wrong. I'm always wrong. I heard so many songs and I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't like that. This is not, this is not, you know, I'm not feeling it. And it yeah. becomes a hit. And I'm like, how, why? How, how did it work? Why people like, that? okay, cool. I have a lot to learn still. And sometimes I hear the song and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I love this song. And it, goes but it doesn't go far i'm mm. like oh, oh i really believed in this record i really, really believed in this song but sometimes i'm right sometimes i'm like oh this is going to be a big record this is going to be a huge huge song and it becomes huge you know it blows up and sometimes sometimes i'm right very in advance sometimes i say hey this song is going to be a big big hit and two years later it's a big three years later it's a big big hit but before then, it wasn't. So, like, you know, in the beginning, it's just like crickets. And you're like, why? I believe in this record. And we're pushing it. And it's like three years later, boom, it becomes a hit. It becomes big. So, well, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Alex, for, for being on the podcast today. Hopefully, everyone got some, some nuggets right there. I mean, going with the flow. I mean, if you listen to Alex's story, I mean, the flow of being in the band, moving to the U.S., not knowing what's going on, managing to artificial intelligence to... All this kind of fun stuff. And it was just, hey, I'm going to follow my North Star. And even today, even with all those accomplishments, he still has fear. So it doesn't matter what, what you are, who you are. You might have some sort of fear. Just kind of work through it. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please subscribe. Please share. And uh, go find Alex. Bye, everyone.